Hey, young guy, how you doing today? Good, how are you? Welcome to Rooster.com. Rooster, the wacky rooster, old guy, young guy, trying to make some sense of all this market craziness. Uh, hey, born to be wild. Were you born to be wild this weekend? Uh, I tried to be, but uh, it any, didn't work out so any well. Any stories you can share with the ladies? No, uh, no, you know, no. I always wonder what you do on the weekend. Uh, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Oh my gosh, well, anyway. We got a wild guest. Maybe we can get some wild stuff out of him, since the uh, young guy doesn't want to open up today. But uh, anyway, we're really excited to have our mystery guest today. Uh, there are uh, many people who would have liked to get him on their show, YG. You know, he's a, you know, he's a genius, our, our, our guest. He's a wild guy, wild person, born to be wild, and he's a genius. CNBC, he's not on, he is doing his first ever. He chose us over CNBC. He chose us over CNBC, and he's a genius. Oh. Can you believe it? Our show is growing by leaps and bounds. I, tell you, I can't believe where this, this uh, rooster is going. Oh, we it's got, YouTube. It's a phenomenon. Well, this is why, this, is why this, this person's a genius. Because he understands that YouTube gets to the entire world 24-7, all the time. It's like TiVo in a bottle. You, anytime you want to get the broadcast, it's available. If somebody in Australia wants to watch it, they can write it, watch it right now. They can watch it next week. They can watch it a year from now. This is the beginning of, I, I think I'm starting to understand this guy a little bit. I think I'm starting to understand his genius. But he loves our show. He's one of our biggest fans. And he begged to be on our show. And of course, you know, we love begging, so <laughs> we put him right on the show. Uh, now, can you guess who the Mr. Guest is? Because uh, I, I, you haven't met him yet. I'm going to bring him in here pretty shortly. Tell us all about him. Well. First of all, I just want to say that uh, he's not uh, Cookie Einstein. Cookie Einstein uh, is the genius dog who got headlines this weekend. Uh, there are so many articles in Orange County, California here about this. This dog does quadratic equations. Oh, oh my! I, he's I actually called her agent to try to get her on, but uh, she's booked. So. I know. I, this dog is probably like a billionaire by now because oh. it, this dog knows everything. I, we couldn't get it on, so we had to settle for the only other genius I've ever heard of in California, which is our mystery guest. So anyway, rather than keep you guessing about our, 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 our guest, I would like to introduce him. His name is Mr. P, and it's Cheeto Fun. Woo! Welcome. Mr. P, welcome to Rooster, baby. I can't believe this. I'm old guy, OG. 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 This is YG back here. That's right. This is Mr. P. None of us use our real names. We're kind of like strippers, you know. They, they never use their real names. They don't want anybody to know who they really are. We don't want anybody to know who we are. OG, YG, Mr. P, and his... Cheeto fun. Now, before before I allow you to talk, because I mean, Mr. P. Once we, you'll see. Once he gets talking, this guy just goes on with with the craziest, wildest, most innovative thinking I've ever heard in my life. But uh, he's not just a genius. Who, who, you know, he's not just a boring genius like most geniuses. You think of, you know, you think of these guys. They just sit around and they think they got the pipe. You know, they're blowing the smoke rings and they're, you know, in their Mershon pipe. Well, this guy is not one of those kind of geniuses. This guy is a glider pilot. I mean, he goes around in a glider. His girlfriend's called Glider Girl. I mean, this guy is Mr. <laughs> pilot. He has a, a, he's a kamikaze dirt biker. It's amazing he's here. All his limbs are working. This is unusual. Often one of his limbs are broken from his kamikaze dirt bike. This is the cool guy that we were all jealous of in high school? Is that I, I live vicariously through this guy, I tell you. He's a skier, a snow skier, a wild snow skier. And he's a stock market investor and a genius. Now, let me tell you something about him in terms of his uh, results. His Cheeto fund, th I, this guy didn't do investing as a living. He started in this just shortly. His Cheeto fund is up in 22 of the 24 last months. And not only that, but it's up 20% year to date. 20% oh. year to date. And he sold his house at the top of the housing market. Now that's just something that enrages me because I didn't do any of those things. I, I, me neither. I mean, I am so stupid. I am so humbled by this man. But anyway, uh, I, I, I got to tell you, I, uh, I just don't understand how somebody could be this smart. And, and, I, and I wish I could be him, but uh, unfortunately the best I could do is interview him and maybe learn a little something from Mr. P and his Cheeto fund here. So let me start off by telling you, when I first met Mr. P, 
he suggested this book. I was reading it here at the beginning of the show. The Fifth Discipline by Peter M. Sangi, I believe, is how you pronounce it. And uh, uh, this book was, uh, was recommended to me because I said, hey, how do I get to be as brilliant as you are? Because uh, he, ha he had these ideas uh, that I had never heard of before. And uh, I, I was really excited by these ideas. So I read the book, and it's basically about you have to spend your whole life learning, that you can never stop learning. And that anybody who stops learning or starts believing anything that people uh, want to believe or that everybody seems to believe, then it's too late. So could you tell me a little bit about how you discovered this book, Mr. P, as a, as a starter here, so people can hear how you, uh, how you look at things? <clears throat> well, interestingly, uh, how the book was introduced to me was by a third party friend of mine in industry who said, look, there's only one book. Just read this book. You don't need any other book in your whole life. Well, I'm not sure that that's true, but that would be the center point of the book. And as it turns out, the, Peter saying he is an MIT guy. Um, MIT has a master's degree in that, fifth discipline thinking, called systems thinking. So does USC. And in fact, my master's degree from USC is that book. Okay. And all the tenets of the book, the counterintuitive thinking, um, the role that people play in decision making, it's but all there. So, counterintuitive thinking, that's sort of the, like, if I needed a buzzword to put on this, it's sort of counterintuitive thinking? Well, let's put it this way. Almost everything that groups, mass groups of people do is wrong. So you're saying people like to follow the crowd. They follow the crowd, and the crowd generally doesn't do things. If, if they don't do it wrong, they don't do it very right. So coming out uh, and, and seeing where the, the error in the, in the crowd's ways are, you know, because at some point, like everybody thought housing would keep going up. Right. It was like, even, I mean, the greatest firms, investment firms in the world thought it would keep going up. They kept making all these, uh, these stupid loans and selling them, and people kept buying them, and yet they were wrong, right? Well, it's not clear they were wrong. Um, certain individuals that made the decisions got very rich indeed. Um, maybe the people who bought the houses were wrong, and maybe the people who worked below the management level were wrong, and maybe the people who invested in the pension plan of the company that made the investments were wrong, but the VP and the CEO and the board of directors were not wrong. They're all rich. They're all rich. So obviously, whenever you're rich, you've, you've, you've made money off of somebody else's mistake. So, uh, like Hank Paulson, I mean... Uh, I, I got to tell you, you know, uh, YG. Uh, yes, OG. Mr. P here, he, he met the hottest girlfriend. He's got this hottest girlfriend. He met her in a totally different way than I've ever heard anybody meeting. We don't have time to go into that, but. but well, YG, I'm hoping that we can get into that later. Yeah, YG will need some tips on that okay. after the show. And, uh, but the most interesting thing he's told me lately, because he comes up with a, with a million great thoughts every day, is about Mr. Paulson. What do you think about Mr. Paulson? What, what was your latest about why he became Treasury Secretary? Well, <clears throat> nobody, or let's put it this way, um, it's extremely counterintuitive. Because, let's face it, he quit a job that paid him 1,000 times more than he's making working for the government. 1,000 times more. All right? Well... To us, that seems, no, not to us, to the average American, that sounds either stupid or noble, okay? Well, so they don't want to think of him as stupid, they think of him as noble. So he built a reputation overnight. He gave up Wall Street to help America. In fact, he's neither stupid nor noble, he's a genius. So disinformation is a science. It's a science, and disinformation is a series of correct facts, carefully scripted, such that anyone reading the script will draw the wrong conclusion. Well, my head's about to explode, YG. Ooh. I think we're going to have to call this the end of the segment and get into some more stuff later. I need a break or a scotch or something. My God, my head's exploding. <laughs>